I just discovered something I need to show to you. So what I discovered is, when I just put my hand on the wall, just like this, I just put my hand on the wall, then the scales get over one kilo lighter. So it's two pounds. And with both hands, it's like two and almost two and a half kilo. Like five pounds lighter. So I can put weight onto the wall. I can, so my weight is not going only downwards, but the weight is going into the wall just by placing my hands onto the wall, just by touching it. Two and a half kilos, five pounds. That's quite something, isn't it? And the reason why I mention this, why I'm talking about this, is because to get more aware of how the weight is leaving the body, how you place your weight onto the earth, like usually a left foot, right foot, right sit bone, left foot. How does the weight of your body leaves your body? How is it placed onto the world? How many kilos is that when I do like this? Not so much, just uh, one and a half kilos. If I pull down, I can remove almost eight kilos of my weight through the wall. Let's uh, play with this in a Feldenkrais lesson and feel more about how force and how weight is distributed through the body, how force vectors and weight leaves and enters the body. Ha! <laughs> Alright. For you it's 10 seconds later, for me it's like 6 hours later. I was wondering if I'm able to do this video today, but I want to do it. Let's get to it. Let's explore how forces go through the body. Very difficult to understand. Is it difficult to understand? I guess it is. Take some time to understand it. Some people can have a feeling for that, but many don't. So we'll go through it uh, very detailed, very step by step, and we have to be very quiet to do this. We're going to do small, simple movements, lying on our backs. I will lie on my back, you will lie on your back, so you need some carpet space. And very tiny. We could go to the gym and do big movements, but then we won't feel, we will feel a lot, of course, and maybe sour muscles, but we won't feel the details and we want to feel those small things and we want to have time to think about it. Um, what that to take a rest is quite a rather good to the decision many times. And one more thing, some people are really good movers and some people are really poor movers. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> uh, but some people, like for example, I have uh, one client, he has strong hip pain, but he does, he's not arthritic. His hip joints are okay, but he has tremendous pain. And he's smart, he's a software engineer, but he's illiterate concerning movement. Whenever I try to guide him through a small sequence, he will talk like crazy, he will just start talking and try to get a way around uh, my suggestions to him. Um, and then when he starts to move, he doesn't know very much where is left, right, up, down, and it goes in all directions and he starts to be spastic and then there's the pain again. And that's an extreme, extreme case. I, I see people like that in my classes sometimes but not so much because if somebody is really illiterate in movement they won't come to Feldenkrais classes they will avoid movement at all costs they will maybe they will be able to do running and bicycling and tennis but they won't be able to engage in movement explorations because they don't feel comfortable with it can have many causes it's not always the parents. <laughs> you cannot always blame the parents. That's what people say, at least. You can blame the circumstances in life, the school system. 
that's always good to blame uh, society. We can blame society, uh, scientists, doctors. Uh, we don't blame ourselves. But we can improve ourselves. <laughs> we can learn by ourselves, right? So back to this topic of forces through the body, kinetic, kinesthetic force. So please come to lie onto your back on a carpet. You need a firm surface and you should feel comfortable and warm. Or not cold, not freezing. We okay. So on your back, and please get both both of your feet stand both of your feet. So the feet are standing. You're on your back. The feet are standing. And we use feedback from the ground. You can feel the floor behind you. It is behind. Obviously, it's behind you in the sense of it's in your back. In the front is the room, right? So we have two directions, front and back. The other directions very mysterious stuff. Where is right, where is left, where is up, where is down. <sighs> Anyways, you can feel the floor under the soles of your foot, of your feet, right? These days I seem to, because I have a small screen up there, so I always need to check if the picture is still okay. These days I, I'm so unhappy with Canon. I just bought this camera. And I cannot trust the camera. So I'm looking at the screen. I should really look at the lens. That's where you are at now. Okay. Anyways, your feet, your feet are standing. And then you're lying on your pelvis and, and uh, yes, on your shoulder blades somewhere and on the back of your head, that's where you're lying. And your elbows probably, shoulders, upper arm. And don't use too much tension to hold your legs. We are already in the lesson. This is not side talking. <laughs> uh, your legs should be able to stand by themselves without using muscular force. So if you are able to let go of the muscles in your legs and if they just drop, then you know you need some kind of effort or work, muscle work, to keep them standing. We will uh, work with one foot first. So please lengthen your right leg and keep your left leg standing, your left foot, so your foot is standing. And there are arches in your foot, like two longitudinal, two long arches and one arches across your foot. It's like bridges. If you look at old stone bridges, like stone, 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 like they make it form like a bridge and in between there are tendons and ligaments. I think tendons connect bone to muscles and ligaments connect bone to bone. I don't know why they make this distinct, distinction. And they work almost like this bridge. When you put pressure on it, it will be more stable or like a dam, like the Hoover Dam. It's an arch and then there's water pressing against it, loads of water. And when there's water pressing, they get more stable. So please put more weight onto your foot. Like I showed in the scales in the beginning of the video, I made this deliberately. This image of putting weight onto your feet or onto the wall. So please put more weight onto the left foot. Like lean against the floor with your left foot stronger. Lean, 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 and let go again. Lean, 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 lean. And you can do this for hours, but we do it just for two minutes. Lean more, and you will feel 
your, the skin of your foot will help you feel what you're doing. Because either the heel will be pressed more, or the balls of your foot will be pressed more, or it's, it's your toes. Can you feel more pressure on the inside edge of your left foot, or the outside edge, or the inside edge of your left heel? the middle part of your heel, where do you press? So these are questions we need to ask ourselves with our mind because we do several things at once. We are thinking, that's important, we are thinking. We think we want to do a certain movement and then we start to do this movement. We move, that's the second concept, and then we sense, we are sensing. Where does, where does it press? How do we feel? Fourth thing, feel. Sense and feel, two different things. Think, move, sense, feel. There's a billion things happening in, in your body at this second with oxygen and all sorts of chemicals. But we just focus on pressing or leaning more against the floor with the left foot. So what are the things that can happen? For one, the pelvis can roll to the right. It's a difficult movement for some. It's not easy to find, so we need to go slow. When you press stronger with your left foot against the floor, your pelvis should roll to the right. And the rest of the body should be really relaxed. Relaxed, 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 relaxed. Nothing should hold. So as a human, we can be in many different, uh, continue with the movement, but as a human, we can be in so many different positions. Like when you're standing upright, you are not as relaxed as when you're lying on your back. When you push with your foot in standing, maybe you want to push a door open or push a chair or a bed or a person in a wheelchair to help the other person. And when you pull, so your, your torso has to be stiff to transfer the push from the foot to the door, for example, or the window, or whatever you want that, that you push. So we need core power and core stiffness for many reasons. But when you're lying on the floor right now, or on your carpet, you don't need this stiffness of your upper body. In fact, you need to let go of the stiffness. We have vertebras, right, inside, built in, there's vertebra. Inside the body is bones and ribs. And in between the ribs, intercostal muscles. And these muscles need to let go. The ribs need to be able to slide against each other. The, 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 the vertebrae need to be able to turn. The neck needs to be able to turn. The lower back, everything needs to be flexible to allow this force that's generated from maybe your buttocks or maybe your upper leg muscles, there's a force. So let's see, where is it going? You push against the floor with your left foot. You push however you do that, but there's bones. You push with the help of the bones. See, there's gravity. A certain amount of gravity on this planet. If the gravity would be stronger, we would all look like snails without bones because we couldn't get up too hard. Everybody would be flat. But the gravity is just right. Not strong enough, but strong enough. So we can develop, or we have developed bones as a species. Many species have bones. And these bones help us to erect ourselves to get up against gravity. It's like placeholders, like poles, like sticks in a tent. So when your left foot is standing, there's like these two bones inside your left foot and there's a big bone in your upper leg. And they help you transfer force from some muscles into the left foot and push with the left foot against the floor. So if your body is super stiff, you would go into a bridge, right? But you're not stiff. You try to be very soft and feel. You press against the foot, then there's the knee, and 
the knee acts as a hinge and the knee will lift the, the hip joint into the air, lift the hip joint, which will make the pelvis roll backwards and to the right. So that's the movement we want to feel, we want to experience, and you need your whole body to experience that. And let go of your neck, don't clench your teeth, don't hold, don't fixate your eyes. Just let this movement happen. It's a push with the left foot against the floor. Let's give this a general direction. So this is very technical. I give you uh, something to work with, more to work with. Uh, stretch out your right arm to your right. Shoulder height, not on the height of your navel, not on the height of your head, just put your arm lying towards the right. Soft, easy. And your left hand you put on your belly or onto your right shoulder, but also soft and easy. And now reach, reach with your left hand for your right hand and try to touch with your left hand your right hand and do everything that's necessary to touch with your left hand your right hand. So many things happening, right? And it's easy. So you have to push with your left foot against the floor and your head is rolling and your eyes have to look and your whole body is rolling. You're rolling on your right side and so you can touch your right hand and then roll back again. And do this 10 times, 20 times and see what's happening. There's a lot happening. It's not just your head rolling a little bit. Your head is dragged dragged over the floor for like 20, 30 centimeters. How much is that in inches? 12 inches? Everything can roll. And you push with your left foot a little bit and keep your knee, your left knee towards the ceiling. So you transfer force from your left foot up through your whole body to make your body rotate and allow your left hand to touch your right hand. On the other side, you're putting weight into the ground. You're a force vector. You're pushing against the floor. You bring weights into the floor with your left foot. So if you would have a scales bathroom device, scales, under your left foot, how much kilo or pound would it show? 10 maybe? 15? You push. So the force you push against the floor will make your pelvis turn and tilt. This is a very nice movement. Don't hold your breath. I love this movement. And you could do that, just that one movement for 20 minutes and explore with your arms and then have a nap. And it will be a marvelous nap. And you will be refreshed when you wake up. So you can use the pause button to achieve this effect or continue with the lesson, which we do uh, now. So please just take a rest on your back, both legs long and feel for the after effect of this movement. How do you feel after this movement? It's like you heard a poem or you heard somebody something say and then you just be quiet for a couple of seconds and feel into yourself what does the words spoken evoke in yourself? What is your reaction? In this case it's the movement. What is the aftermath of this movement? What do you feel after this movement? How is your left buttocks, your left leg, how does it feel differently from your right leg? And I would be happy if you share something in the comments so other people can read that too. Because there's things you can feel right now. So please get your left foot to stand again and see where you put it, how you put it, 
Hope it's not too awkward, but in a good position, so it's good standing. And so now it's just standing, it's just right standing. And start to put weight onto the foot again. Lean more against the floor with your left foot and see how you put force into the ground, how you lean against the ground, how you can feel it in the soles of your feet, how you push against the floor, how weight is transferred in both directions, which rolls your pelvis to the right and a little bit backwards. It needs to roll a little bit backwards, which of course requires your lower back to be soft. which might relieve some strain you have there, which requires your hip joints to be soft and open, which might relieve pain you have in the hip joints. It's a very nice movement. Okay, then stretch out your left leg again, get your right foot to stand. Standing, to stand, to standing. Grammar point, what is it? Feel your right foot standing. Now, can you feel how your right foot is standing? Is it more on the outside or more on the inside? Is it more on the middle of the heel? Are you standing more on your heel or more on the balls of your feet? Do your toes touch the floor? There's so many possibilities. And then start to bring weight on your right foot. And feel this, what you have to do to put weight onto your right foot. So which direction is your right knee going? It should. Your right knee should go further away from your face and then come closer and further away. And your pelvis, your left pelvis should roll a little bit to the left and a little bit backwards because you're lifting your right hip joint. Because you're pushing against the floor with your right foot, this will lift your right hip joint and ideally, if you're really relaxed, you will be able to feel how the pelvis tilts a little bit backwards. Posterior tilt of the pelvis because of the lifting. You think of yourself as, as you could, we're not a pudding, we're not a pudding, like a pudding you would put on a plate and it's a pudding and it's wobbly and we are not. We have bones and nervous system obviously and a lot of other things. So there is a kinesthetic chain. You put weight onto your foot and you can feel it in the arches and in your feet and the sole of your foot is getting a little bit flatter. The, the meat is a little bit flatter because you push against it. And then this is transferred up to the knee and the knee needs to go in some direction away from your face. And this will pull on your hip joint and the hip joint will lift because of the force and the pelvis will take, tilt backwards and this will pull on the spine and this, because it pulls on the spine the chin is coming closer towards the ceiling the head is tilting backwards yeah it's a spine a chain through the spine a movement chain movement reaction so you could explore this further, press the pause button, use, please make use of the pause and the play. That, that's why we have it. But we continue, I continue. So you, you can pause and play, you can do the thing to the left, like you have your left arm to the side and then reach for your left hand and so forth. And after your pause, or after your exploration, take a pause, come onto your back and we will continue on, on the back. Again, please bring your right foot to stand, put it in a good position. Let's see how it feels now. You should be more proficient already, have more awareness. That's how, what it's called, awareness through movement. You're more aware of what you're doing. When you push or lean stronger against the floor, how you get a grip. Of course, the foot is not entirely like a bridge or a stone bridge. The tendons and ligaments, they can store energy and release energy. And when you push, it's a dynamic system, very complicated. But we don't need to think about it. You just feel how you push against the floor. It tilts your 
pelvis to the left and a little bit backwards, all right? So that does work. Elongate your right leg. So we're on the back again and then bring both feet to standing. And now we will do it with both feet together. So we did it with the left, with the right separately, so we can have uh, our attention on the details. And now it's getting more complicated. So you push with both feet against or lean with both feet a little bit more. You have to, you have to, to work really, really tiny, 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 careful, careful. Because it's easy to overdo it and then you feel nothing or you just raise your pelvis and then you're going into yoga movement. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, just put a little bit of weight onto your feet. You should have the awareness by now. So your pelvis can tilt this little bit backwards. Not because you engage your belly muscles, but because you push against the feet and then let go again. It's a tiny movement. Let's try the other direction. It's super difficult. You almost need, need, you need a, a doctor's degree to do it. But we will try. PhD. Let's try if you can do it. You lift your feet a tiny little bit. You just remove weight from your feet. Actually, you, you don't lift the feet. You remove weight from the feet, just as you would push against the feet like before. And then you stop removing weight. Think of the scales. So you put your feet on bathroom scales and it would show like what, 10 kilo? And then you remove weight so it just shows like five kilo or two kilo or one kilo and then let go again. And if you do that right, if you remove weight from your feet, your pelvis will tilt forwards. There's no other way. Because the weight of the legs the weight of the legs are pulling on the hip joints. And this will make your pelvis tilt forwards. Very difficult movement. I know, I know, it's a super difficult movement. Don't use power, don't use core power. Just remove a little bit of weight from your feet. That's the opposite direction of pushing and leaning against the floor. you can investigate into this movement, how to do it correctly. Some, for some people it takes weeks to learn it. So you remove weight from your feet by lifting the feet, but this will tilt your pelvis forward if you do not engage your core muscles. Right? And then you let go again. It pulls, and it pulls on the spine like a chain. And of course it will pull your chin closer to your chest because it pulls on the whole spine like a skewer. skewer. And then you go in a different direction and you lean more against your feet so that the pelvis tilts a little bit backwards. Yeah, this is the pelvic clock lessons for, for, lesson for all the Feldenkrais practitioners listening. And then you go in the other direction. You lift your feet just a little bit. You remove weight from your feet, that's it and then you push against the floor again. If you can't see exactly what I'm doing on the video, I will not give you a close-up. You have to feel it, you don't have to see it, you don't have to copy it, you have to feel and find it. Sorry. Just forwards and backwards. Take a little break. And then get your feet to stand again and try the same movement. Ah, ah, it's better. Small breaks are pretty good. Pretty good thing, small breaks. Getting backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And you should feel it working through your whole spine. And if you have been to a workshop with me, I would uh, go through, I would go to your spot and I will work with you in person. So that's the benefit of a personal workshop with me. So you will have a 100% chance to find this movement. With YouTube it's more difficult. I cannot see what you're doing. And I can just uh, hope that you're getting it right. 
It's a very fundamental thing to know and to explore, to lift your feet a little bit and to push more against the floor, but it's tiny until it rocks your whole spine. And when you can do it faster, you can rock your pelvis back and forwards and it will pull on your head and it will rock your head and it will rock your pelvis back and forwards and your whole spine and it doesn't affect your breathing but it affects your whole chest and all your, <laughs> all your ribs must be loose, your whole body must be loose and that's the movement you should be able to find. Rocking movement, rocking the pelvis back and forwards with the help of your legs. Yeah, so this is the goal of this class. And I can, we could go in many different directions from here. I could teach a couple of more classes which will look like Bones for Life, but this uh, Feldenkrais is from Moshe Feldenkrais, Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais. It's very interesting to explore these pushing forces through the body. Uh, maybe I will teach a couple of more classes like this, but this is the most basic one. And I hope you were able to find this movement. Let's, let's get into standing, because standing now feels awesome. So please come to stand, come up to stand and just feel how you're standing now. How, how? Two feet standing on the floor. Your back, nothing in the back. No floor on your back. There's no floor. You're in the room, you're inside the room standing. And the only places you're touching the floor is your feet two feet, and you should have a very good feeling now, a very good awareness of how you're standing. If you're standing more on the heels, and more of the right heel or the left heel, what is your preferred foot? You should have a good feeling now. Good feeling, not a good feeling, but a good, <laughs> I mean, you should be aware of, I think, it should be easy for you now to, be, to feel on which foot you have more weight or if it's evenly distributed. And it should be easy for you to distribute your weight more to the right and more to the left or more in front on the balls of your feet or your toes and, or swaying a little bit backwards so you have more f weight onto your heels. Did you try the Wii, the Nintendo Wii? They have like a little pad and it will show you where your weight is. But now you have to feel it. I think it's easy to feel. Some people feel the neck is very easy and the head is on top. You can feel where is your pelvis in space. The pelvis on top of your feet, more the balls of your feet, midfoot, forefoot or hind foot, more behind, more on the heels and more on the left. You can put your heels closer together and just feel how that feels like or you feel heels further apart. So this is a very stable stance, right? When people are standing like this, like blokes, in the evening they stand in front of the pub, drinking a pint, right? Stand like this and they stand very stable and they look very manly and when somebody pushes them, they won't nudge, but they cannot run. <laughs> if they want to catch somebody, they see somebody they would like to talk to, they cannot run. They first will have to go like this and put the feet close together. In this position, it's easy to take a step forwards or backwards or to the side and go around, but this is very unstable. Uh, could, you could be pushed over very <laughs> easily when you stand like this. So there's like a compromise in between stable and being able to walk fast. So, Hip, they would say like hip joints width apart or shoulder width apart, but really it's neither shoulder width nor hip joint width. It's something in between where you feel comfortable, a mix between stable and be able to, to walk away, to make a step. And then where is your weight? And how are you stacked? Where is your pelvis? Where can, you can put your pelvis anywhere and then Take a few steps and feel the soles of your feet. You should have a very good feeling 
of the soles of your feet, where, where you put the weight and how you roll over it. So many information coming from the feet, from the legs, into the brain right now. The brain is flushed with information and you can use that to feel good. To good feel, to feel good. <laughs> like to feel good, right? To have a good feeling. But also to be feeling, have a good knowledge. Good feeling skills. Skills. Yeah? I hope that was interesting, how you put weight on the floor, how this weight pushes you. And uh, so this is the end of this lesson. Please leave your comments to share with other people and to share with me your experiences. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, like this video, the whole, the whole package, the whole fan package. <laughs> And thank you for watching. I'm really happy that you watch my video, that you're there and I'm here and I can produce something that benefits you. And I'll see you in the next video.